So welcome to this webinar on a step-by-step -step guide to score 720 plus on GMAT. I'm Piyush and I'm going to be your main host today. And before I start, I just want to make sure that all of you can hear me loud and clear. So it, it will be great if you can comment uh, by just saying yes, if you can hear me loud and clear. That way I will get to know my voice is audible to all of you. All right, so I'm yet to see some comments saying that. So please let me know if you can hear me quickly and I want the uh, want you to participate in this webinar at as much as possible because uh, you will be able to generate a lot of understandings around how you should go about your preparation so please let me know if you can hear me loud and clear great great so I do see some of the votes uh, some of the responses all right so uh, before I begin I would like to know about you guys so uh, basically uh, tell me since when have you been preparing for the GMAT okay since I understand that a lot of you would be new to GMAT some of you would be uh, preparing for quite some time so tell me like since how long have you been preparing one month two months are you yet to start just to get an idea about uh, the overall uh, batch and the people who are here okay tell me in the comments like uh, since how long have you been preparing for the GMAT that will give me a pretty good idea about the batch so if you are yet to start you can just say I'm yet to start okay Jeet says it just has been 10 days okay good so uh, you are in the right place I believe you will get to know how to get started with the prep great uh, what about the other people okay so I have some people saying started two weeks back when I stayed uh, Rekha started a month back Mardas has started 10 months back Rajul is yet to start and uh, so most of the you have been preparing for less than a month. That's that's what I can see. Uh, great, great. So people who have just started this web, uh, this their preparation, the webinar is really going to give you some very important insights that can save a lot of your prep time over the next few months. Okay. So make sure you're listening to that very, very uh, uh, clearly. And people who have already prepared for two, three months, I see a good number of you, like there was one person who has prepared for 10 months also. So if you have been preparing, you can still see some of, you can still uh, benefit from the webinar because you'll see some strategies, uh, which I will talk about for people who have prepared already for some time. Okay, so let me get started with this webinar. So I, as I as I earlier mentioned, I am Piyush and I am going to be your main host in this webinar. I have around eight years of mentoring experience where I have mentored students to get into the top B schools around the globe. Uh, I love data. I, I have taken the GMAT myself, scored a 740 in my first attempt. And I'm going to talk about my experience of not just scoring the 740 and helping many students score 700 plus over the years. Okay, so the webinar is uh, structured in very simple uh, fashion it is broken down into three sections in the first section I'll quickly take a couple of minutes to talk about who we are as a company and then I will uh, go to the main part of the webinar where we are going to spend almost an hour discussing the strategy of uh, preparing for GMAT and getting a 720 plus and then I'll open this webinar for an open-ended Q&A so I'm going to answer your questions uh, for approximately 10 minutes so uh, or maybe even more if we need it. But uh, I, I am open to taking up comments during the second part also. So it's OK if you want to ask me something, feel free to interrupt. I'll do my best to answer it. But obviously, I'll make sure that I, we are also sticking on the time. OK, so this is how the webinar is structured. So I'll quickly tell you who we are. So we. Uh, we are basically uh, at GMAT Wiz. What we have done is we have created uh, the entire world's only truly personalized GMAT course. So we offer a completely online personalized preparation option for GMAT. And what we have basically done is we have created a course that starts with a personalized study plan for you, that creates a personalized study plan on the go, and then basically serves you real-time improvement modules on basis of your strengths and weaknesses as you improve, uh, as you go on. So the course is completely dynamic, and you get to work with a dedicated mentor, okay? Throughout your journey, you will get to work with a dedicated mentor who will tell you exactly how you're progressing and what you need to improve on to get to your target score. So at GMAT Wiz, we truly believe in helping out students students in terms of their overall preparation uh, by providing a personalized learning. So let me get to the main part of the webinar and I'm going to uh, give an overview of how I have structured this webinar. Okay, so in order to get to a 720 plus score, what you need to do is you need to break down your entire prep journey into four phases. 
okay and the first phase is probably the most important and probably the uh, most uh, uh, ignored one also people i feel do not plan their prep in the right way okay they do plan it but in they do not plan it in the right way so the first step that you should take if you are yet to start your gmat prep is you should plan your prep very very meticulously okay once the planning is done the second stage becomes much more easier the second stage is you should start working on executing the plan over there you have to go through the concepts and application of the various concept or of the various topics tested on the gmat and don't worry i'm just giving you an overview i'm going to deep dive into each of these four areas okay once you have started executing you also need to continuously assess your performance you need to learn things but you also need to ensure that you are fine tuning as you move forward okay that's a very very critical part of your prep and once you identify once you identify what your weak at you should also work on optimizing those weak areas and that is a key uh, to take you beyond that 720 mark okay so these are four simple steps in which you should uh, prepare for the gmat and i'm going to take you through individual parts now one by one so let me start with the planning aspect okay so the first thing that you need to consider when you are planning uh, your prep is what is the right target gmat score for you and i'm sure that you would have thought of uh, a target like 700 or 720 or 750 or 770 or some people would have targeted a 650 as well depending on your profile depending on your uh, target schools and a lot of other factors but you need to break down your target uh, at a level of quant and verbal as well okay and it is very important that you set realistic targets for yourself so there are two thoughts school of thoughts over here okay in fact there are two uh, different kind of people uh, who exist there are some people who are really good in one section okay uh, for example you might have heard that indians generally are good at quant and let's say a native speaker is generally good at verbal so there are people who have their own strengths like uh, in that case if you belong to that category you should try and maximize your score in your strong area that should be your goal otherwise if you are let's say good in both sections you are equally good in both sections you should try to balance your target score in quant and verbal okay and why is this important this is important because once you know what is your target score in quant and verbal you can prepare according to that that is that is why it is very very critical piece of information so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take a simple example so let's assume that your target score is 720 and i'm going to tell you if you are targeting a 720 what should be your target quant and verbal scores in each of these categories okay so uh let's see the first category so let's say you are good in quant and you your target is 720 so then you should break down your target to a q50 and a verbal 38 overall so that should be a goal in case you are already good in quant now what if you are good in verbal if you are good in verbal you should try to maximize your score in verbal to maybe a 43 or even a 44 and your quant score should be somewhere around that 45 46 mark okay now what if you are equally good in both areas in that case you should target somewhere around a 48 in quant and a 40 in verbal okay this is the first stage because once you have this clarity of thought then you can basically prepare your plan accordingly okay so this is the first stage next what comes next once you have identified your target breakdowns then you should identify the right sequence of studying for example in verbal let me talk about verbal first and then i'll go to quant so in verbal you need to understand what does the gmat test you on okay and before i answer this question i would like to hear from you guys so tell me what according to you what are the skills that gmat tests you on in verbal i would like to hear from you guys in the comments here okay in the meantime i'm going to take up a question from shwetank uh, in the meantime you tell me what are the skills tested on gmat verbal so uh, shwetank is saying hello mr abhinav uh, shwetank sorry my name is peyush so i'm 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 not sure if you got the name right but anyway uh, how have you started your prep i'm still hang you over 450 okay so you are talking about to abhinav or someone else in the comments i'm i'm so sorry for that uh, see again uh, i i'm going to talk about in the webinar uh, how you can actually go to a uh 720 kind of a score don't worry about that um uh, shashank says analysis okay rekha says sentence collection is tested and so says grammar is tested roberto has a nice point uh understanding english is tested okay that's good 
uh anshul says diction is also tested interpretation sccr and rc okay harsh sccr and rc are three areas obviously but i'm asking what what are the skills that are tested so very good responses from anurag and mubarak uh in fact pranav also so if you see in gmat there are three skills that they test you on the first and the foremost thing that they test you on is your comprehension skills how well can you comprehend something that is written okay when i say comprehend it doesn't mean you have to just get an idea you have to understand it clearly how clearly can you comprehend things that are written so meaning comprehension skills is the first thing that is tested second skill that is tested is your analytical reasoning skills okay how when when uh, uh, information is presented in front of you how can you identify the flow of information what are the gaps that exist what are the assumptions that are made how can you analytically re reason with the information presented to you okay that's something which is tested on the gmat and then the third skill that is tested is if there is a lot of information provided to you can you bring out the main point clearly okay and the reason why these skills are tested on gmat is these are core managerial skills as a manager you have to be analytical as a manager probably a budding manager you're going to study a lot of case studies during your mba program and over there it is important that you understand the main purpose when you're going through the case studies okay so these skills are really tested during your mba curriculum and that's why gmat tests you on them now why did i talk about the skills the reason is once you understand what are the skills uh you will be able to actually understand the right sequence of learning okay and uh uh, uh thank you shetang for uh, this i i am sure you're going to gain a lot from this webinar don't worry about that all right so yeah let's see so basically the first skill is all that you need to master sentence correction that's the most important skill which is tested in sc i understand that SC is also about grammar, but the good thing in grammar is uh, GMAT SC is basically that the grammar is mostly meaning driven. The most common concepts that are tested are uh, modifiers, parallelism, comparison, and all these things are based on comprehension. So if you have to master your uh, sentence correction section, you have to do well on comprehension. So SC only tests you on one skill. Okay. Now what about CR? CR tests you on two skills. You have to understand the meaning of individual sentences for sure, but you also have to analytically reason how the information is flowing from one sentence to the other. What are the linkages that exist? How? Uh, what are the assumptions that have been made? What are the flaws that exist? All that has to be done for CR. So for CR, you need to build two skills at the same time, and for RC, you need all the three skills. you not only need to understand individual sentences understand the flow you also have to understand the purpose you have to understand the main point why has the author written that piece of information that's very critical in rc okay so this is these are the three skills that are tested on the gmat and these are how these skills map to three sections okay now tell me what do you think should be the right order of learning for verbal section of gmat so if you have you have just started your preparation what should be the right order in which you should go ahead and prepare for gmat verbal in terms of sccr rc how should you go about doing it because again i'm asking this question because i hear a lot of students telling me that okay i do sc on day x of the week i do cr on day y of the week i and i do rc on day z of the week and that's the most common thought process that prevails people simultaneously work on all three areas at the same time okay that's something i come to hear about a lot and not just that there are people who even start in the wrong order they probably start off with something which is much more convoluted they prepare for a lot of time and they end up basically messing up their prep just because they did not know what is the right sequence of learning okay and i'm going to tell you the right sequence of learning now the right sequence according to me is you should first start with sentence correction because when you start with sentence correction you just need to focus on learning one skill that is comprehension then when you move to cr you are a pro you are basically understanding of individual sentences help you immensely because then you have to just focus on building the second skill which is the analytical reasoning skills you don't have to worry about the first skill you have already built it okay and once you are done with cr if you move to rc you just have to worry about the main point because you have already built the two skills 
okay and i see a lot of comments from you megha says megha agrees with this order some of you have mentioned a different order megha megha and mubarak agree with it imran imran says you should start with cr so imran the only problem with starting with cr is you if you are not good at comprehending things you will actually find it tough to actually master cr because you have to still understand individual sentences okay akshit uh, if you do rc before cr uh and you do not understand the how information is flowing see in rc you have a much longer passage to work with in cr you have a small argument to work with and it tests your understanding in depth for that particular part so i always prefer that you follow sc cr and rc this order when you are preparing for the first time this is the best possible scenario for anyone who is a first time test taker okay so make sure you are following this order for verbal now what about quant now for quant it is not that easy most of the people what they say is uh, they will tell you that okay you have to do one module first then do the second module then do the third module and the fourth module and so on and the most common thing that prevails is either you should do np and algebra first then go to wpn geometry okay np is number properties wp is uh, word problems so most of the people actually tell you to go module wise but that's not how quant works and let me give you an, let me give an example by asking certain questions think of a scenario when you have to prime factorize something okay so when you are prime factorizing a number you have to deal with exponents or powers but if you don't know anything about exponents or powers can you prime factorize a number really well probably no think about divisibility questions you are solving divisibility questions and you are not aware of linear or simultaneous equations you will probably struggle over there think about solving square roots and quadratic equations that you come across in statistics so if you see it is not possible to solve a question on number properties without the understanding of algebra probably it's not possible to solve algebra without the understanding of word problems and so on so it is not like you can go module wise if you can if you want you can do that but will it be the most effective approach probably not so what ideally should be done is you should first have the basic understanding of some essential topics okay if you do not have the basic understanding of some essential topics and you start working on number properties you will not be able to understand uh, you will not be able to gain a strong hold over it and that's why we believe that in case of quant your approach should be divided in this way you should first do the basic topics across the various modules in quant that exist so you should do basic topics from all the areas like number properties word problems and algebra first and then only you should move to the intermediate topics of these areas and in the end you should go to the advanced topics okay now i have given a list of topics uh, in the basics intermediate and advanced so i've just mentioned three four names because if i ha would have mentioned all the names this list will actually end up taking the whole Uh, uh, the slide okay so i'm sure a lot of you might be thinking what is covered in basic what is in advanced what is in intermediate don't worry i'm going to tell you a solution how you can get the entire list and i see a question also from rekha that from where can we get the material to practice and learn from don't worry rekha i'm going to take up those questions i have a uh, thought over it and i'm going to discuss about them okay so it is very important to follow the sequence for quant now even in the side inside each of these levels level 1 level 2 level 3 that you see basic intermediate and advanced the order has to be maintained for example generally when you are doing the basic topics you need to first learn the basics of numbers estimation rounding fractions and decimals before you move on to let's say equations linear equations or quadratic equations and things like that because if you don't do that it is very it is going to be difficult for you to solve even the basic concepts of number properties so the order has to be right even within individual levels of learning okay so do make sure that you follow the right level all right so i've talked about the sequence of studying for verbal I've talked about the sequence of studying for quant. Now, what if you are all you have already prepared? I said uh, in the beginning as well. Even if you have prepared for two three months, there is something for you in the webinar. You are going to gain something from the webinar. So, if you have already prepared for some time, then your approach, uh, then your sequence should be slightly different. It should not be just like the ones that I have mentioned earlier. How should you uh, go about it in that case? Okay, what you should do is you should first take up module wise test. 
So for example, you can, uh, if it is about verbal, you can take a test in sentence correction, critical reasoning and test in RC. If it is about quant, you can take a test in number properties, word problems and so on. Okay. Once you're done with your test, you have to classify the modules into two areas. Okay. Strong areas and weak areas. The cutoff that you can take is around 70%. So if something is, uh, so if your score is beyond 70%, you classify that module as your strong area. If your score is less than 70%, you classify that module as your weak area. Okay. As simple as that. Once you have done that, then it becomes easy for you to identify the sequence. Okay. So I'm going to take a simple example to explain this for you. Let's say, uh, let's take example for verbal. Let's say a student takes a module wise test in these three areas and his scores are 90%, 60% and 40% respectively. Okay, he scored 90 in SC, 60 in CR, and 40 in RC. So what 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 we can understand from this is that obviously this student is strong in CR, so SC, sorry. So SC is a strong area, and CR and CR and RC are his weak areas. So this student should first work on the weak areas and then on the strong areas. Strong areas should be taken care of at the end. So the order of learning for this student should be CR followed by RC followed by SC. So first priority should be CR, second priority should be RC, and the third priority should be SC. Okay. Any reason why I have recommended doing CR before RC, even though he is better at CR than in RC? Can anyone tell me in the comments? Again, I would request all of you to participate because I don't want it to be a, a one-sided communication. So yeah, tell me, why have I told, recommended to do CR before RC, even though the score in CR is better than RC? Can anyone tell me in the comments here? I would love to see your responses, guys. Why have I recommended doing CR before RC? The answer is very easy. If you're uh, really attentive, you would know it by now. Okay. Okay. I don't see any responses yet. Do you want a clue, guys? Okay, let me let me give you a clue. So remember, I told you about the scales. I told you why doing CR before RC makes sense. Because the skills that you learn in CR are going to be very, very helpful in RC. Now, 60% is definitely better than 40%. But again, remember that these areas are still your weak areas. So if you do RC before you do CR, you are weak in CR for a certain reason. It could be because of your skill gap. And if you do RC before doing CR, you might as well struggle in RC because of the skill which is missing in CR. Okay. So I see a lot of responses now. I think there is a delay in the responses coming to my end for some reason. I don't know why. But I'm really happy to see your responses, Jitendra, Rajul, Chaitanya. Good guys. So uh, exactly that's, that's something which I wanted to communicate. That CR is important to ace RC. So that's why you should follow this order. So the idea is simple. You divide your modules into two brackets, weak and strong, okay? Within the weak areas, follow the order which I suggested for people who are first time test takers. Within the strong areas also, follow the order which I suggested for people who are taking it for the first time, okay? So that's what you should do. It's very important that you follow the sequence of learning. Now, we have talked about the target score, dividing the target score. We have talked about the sequence of learning. Once you understand what is a target score, once you understand what is the right sequence for learning, you're able to break it down to a topic level. You should be able to create a study plan for yourself. Now, what are the key elements of a study plan? A study plan should have very clear targets and deadlines. And trust me, guys, this is something which I have done as a student myself. I worked a lot on creating a plan of action. There were no deadlines, no ta like targets were mentioned, but again, the deadlines were not there. I kept, uh, I kept actually changing the plan and maybe after two weeks, I even stopped following the plan. You have to ensure that you have clear targets in mind and you mention clear deadlines and you check those deadlines every single week. Then only you will be able to stick to your target. Otherwise you may end up taking more than double the time that you plan for. Okay, so the study plan has to have clear targets and deadlines and all these uh, things should be created by keeping in mind four important factors. So your prep time can be anywhere between 100 to 350 hours depending on four important factors. First factor is your strengths and weaknesses. 
the second factor that you need to take care of is your, the time available with you to study every week so everyone has a different work schedule some of you might have more time some of you might have less time if you do not take into account how much time is available with you while creating the plan of action the chances are high that you will fail in the first week itself and if you don't meet your deadline in the first week that's a very big demotivating factor so make sure you account for the time that is available with you while creating the plan of action and strengths and weaknesses are important because you need to account for the time that you will spend on reading something which you are weak at probably you need to spend some extra time on that so that's very very critical that you have to focus on you also have to think about the right sequence of learning so i gave you an idea i gave you a rough estimate we are very limited on time so i told you at a high level what you should do for squant and verbal you have to follow the right sequence of learning and then you have to also take into account how much content you have to study okay and i'm sure by now most of you would be thinking how can i do this there these are very complex things as a student i probably don't have any idea about how can i incorporate all these things in a study plan myself okay and that's what we realized at gmat was we basically worked with multiple companies over last a dec last decade and we realized that students are left to plan their studies themselves and that is when we came up with the idea of gmat ways where we have created an ai driven engine which creates a study plan for you okay so all you need to do is basically go to our website and register for a free trial and the platform will create a study plan for you and i will recommend i'll request uh, abhi Keith, in a minute, to share the link for our free trial in case anyone wants to go and register. I'll show you a brief snapshot of how the study plan is created by the portal. So once you, so the portal will automatically ask you various information related to your strengths, weaknesses, your target score, your time available per week, and all bases. All those insights, the platform will create a study plan automatically. You will get it in form of a, a, v, a calendar view also, so you can see the study plan on the screen. It clearly tells me that when should I uh, do con foundations, by when I will be completed with sentence correction, critical reasoning, and so on. And not just that, it also tells me exactly on which day, which part I should focus on. So in algebra, what should I do? Algebra basics. What should I do on those particular dates? It exactly gives me clear cut. estimates of what is to be done on which day for the entire prep journey that i have to go for so it's not a study plan which is form of a pdf it is entirely integrated with the course okay and if you want to just view the task for the current week you can switch on the task view it will give you the number of basically the num basis on the number of hours which are available with you it tells you that you have to complete prime number first and it also gives you everything that you are supposed to do in prime numbers over there itself okay so you don't have to open another book you don't have to open another uh, uh, quiz somewhere else all of it is there on the portal it tells you that okay you start with a quiz then you do a video then you do this video then you do this quiz it automatically takes into account everything which is required all you have to do is click on the start button once you basically click on the start button it takes you to the activity screen where you can actually see all the activities all the video lessons all the quizzes that you are supposed to do and all you need to do is get started and not just that the platform does not believe in offering you a static study plan the platform creates a study plan which is dynamic in nature it changes every single week because things change you may have less time in one week you may have more time in one week so every week when you log in you see a pop up like this which tells you how much of the study plan did, did you clear uh, uh, complete last week so if you completed less it recommends you to increase the time you can always put up more time or less time depending on your work schedule your progress and all of it can be considered will be considered by the study plan and it will then update your entire plan basis this okay so if you are not sure how to create a study plan i would say that you should go and check out even like the free trial of the entire gmat wiz course it will give you very clear picture of how the study plan goes even if you are a free trial user remember the one which i showed you right now was for a free trial user okay so even as a free trial user you will benefit from it so here is this is where i uh, complete the first stage of your preparation which is the planning stage remember if you are planning if you if you are uh, planning to do an mba it's your dream remember this goal without a plan is just a wish 
once you have a plan of action once you have those clear deadlines in front of you trust me guys it will break the inner initial inertia that you might be having for your preparation once you know that this is what i have to what i have to do in the next week you know exactly what to do you can get started and you take the first step and then the next step is much more easier for you okay so make sure you start with the planning part now let's move to the second stage okay where i'm going to talk about how do you execute uh, the plan okay now in order to understand what is important while executing it is very important that you understand the gmat algorithm okay and i took a webinar maybe a couple of weeks back on this particular aspect uh, almost a month back in fact on this so i'm going to rush through this part not go into a, a very details of it but how the algorithm basically works is it it basically increases the difficulty level of the question based on how you perform in individual questions so if you do well the difficulty level goes up if you don't do well the difficulty level goes down that's that's basically how it works okay so i'm just showing two students uh, and you, i'm showing the difficulty levels changing as they uh, perform on individual questions and the net result basically is what that if you uh, do not focus on like if you do not focus on the difficulty level even with the same level of accuracies your scores can be very very different okay so that's something which is very important as uh, per the algorithm and i'm going to show you a simple use case okay so here are two screenshots from esrs uh, in front of you so the esr on the left if you look at the and this is a actual snapshot of one of the students uh, uh, verbal attempt so his verbal score is 30 he made eight mistakes on the right side you can see the verbal score of another student uh, he scored 41 with just seven mistakes So, if you see the difference in the scores, it is eleven points, or in percentile terms, it is even more stark. Fifty-eight percentile versus ninety-three percentile, and you see the number of mistakes are almost very comparable. Okay, what does it tell us? It simply tells us that if you focus on just getting questions right, probably you are not doing your hundred percent while you are preparing. It is. not enough to look at accuracy what is more important is you to look at which questions you are getting right and let me make that clear with the next slide okay so this uh, slide shows the average difficulty level for these two students as they progress through the the, the section okay so saksham esr stands for enhanced score report so this is uh, given to you by gmat once you are taken you have taken the test okay and Uh, let's let's go back to this so if you look at the difficulty levels then if you see the first student in the second and the first quarter mostly got questions which were between easy and medium the second student on the other hand got questions which were medium and high in the second quarter and his difficulty level continuously stayed around that level itself okay and even in the third quarter if you see like if you see the difference this is that big a difference and even in the third quarter the student was getting medium high questions correct and that is why he was able to score that well on the gmat so on gmat it is not just about uh getting the high accuracy accuracy is not what matters on gmat what matters on gmat is your skill okay and what do i mean by skill skill simply means you should have the ability to get a question of any difficulty level correct that's what skill means okay so that's the main thing that you have to focus on now what i'm going to do is again the algorithm thing in itself is a very complex thing in fact last time when i took a webinar on algorithm it went for 70 minutes and we were just talking about the algorithm so if you have not attended it uh, you missed it out you can still go back uh, uh, for it is there in the gmat club youtube channel itself you can find it and you can go through it but what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it simple for you okay i'm going to make it very very simple i'm going to tell you how should you understand uh, the scores that gmat gives you okay so let's understand what does a score of less than 550 on gmat signify okay now when i say less than 550 i don't mean overall score of less than 550 i mean overall like approximate uh, the same level of 550 in individual sections so if you are getting roughly let's say less than 550 in individual sections what does it mean okay it basically means that you are getting most uh, approximately 50% of your easy questions correct obviously uh, if you don't get the easy questions correct your score will move towards 300 but let's assume you are around that 500 550 mark so what it means is you're getting most of the easy questions correct but you're still not getting all of them right 
Okay. In medium questions, you are having a very poor accuracy. So the moment the algorithm starts serving you medium questions, you're not able to get them right. And that's what stops you from getting the hard questions altogether. So what does it signify? What it signifies is if your score is less than 550, 550, it means you're struggling with concepts. And let me take a question from the comments, which Vindra is saying, can you give an idea about how many questions we should target to answer correct in order to get V40? So Vishwendra, again, the whole objective of this part is you should not just worry about accuracy. Okay, it is important that which questions you are getting right. I just showed you with seven mistakes, one student got a 41, with eight mistakes, another student got a 30. And I have seen a use cases, use case where with nine mistakes, students have got just V21. Okay, so it is not important just to look at your uh, accuracy, look at your difficulty levels, the questions that you're getting right. That's very important. Again, if you want to understand it in depth, you can go and check the web webinar on GMAT algorithm. All right, so let's get back to this. So if you see, if you're getting a score of less than 550, it simply means that you are struggling with concepts. That's something that you have to work on. Now let's see what is the meaning of the score range 550 to 650. If you're in this score range, what it means is you're doing very well on the easy questions. Almost all of them you're getting right, let's say 80, 90% of them, okay? But when it comes to medium questions, you're getting most of them right. Again, uh, when I say most, the degree depends on which side of 600 you are on. But let's assume you're closer to 650. So you're getting most of the medium questions right. So you get hard questions. You get to see hard questions, unlike the first case. But the moment algorithm starts serving you hard questions, your accuracy drops. So the algorithm doesn't serve you hard questions. Your accuracy is low on hard questions. You don't get many hard questions. And that's why you get stuck in the range of 500 to 550 to 650. Now, what does this mean? You're getting easy questions right. Okay. You're getting easy questions right. That means concepts are not a problem for you. You're getting most of the medium questions right. That means even with multiple concepts, sometimes you're getting it right. Sometimes you're getting it wrong. But with the hard questions, this low accuracy clearly signifies one simple thing. You're struggling with the application of concepts. You do not really understand or you do not really follow the right methodology for applying the concepts that you have learned. And that's why you are struggling. Okay, and this is something, this is a score range 550 to 650 where I see most of the students getting stuck with at. Because remember, it's very easy to learn concepts. You can learn it from any resource that you want to. There's, because concepts are always the same. A prime number is a prime number, a formula is a formula at the end of the day. But how do you apply them creates the difference between a 700 plus scorer and a person who is below 700. Okay, so Rekha, if you want to take up a, a mock test, uh, the best uh, possible platform is mba.com. The official mocks are the closest to the GMAT. So you can take that up from there. All right. So what do you need to get a 700 plus score? You need to have a very high accuracy in the easy questions. No doubt about it. You need to have very high accuracy even in the medium questions. And you need to have at least at least a 60 to 70 percent accuracy in the hard questions. The better it is, the uh, for, further you go towards the 750 mark. Okay, so it's as simple. You should not just look at accuracy. So Vishwendra, look at your accuracy difficulty level wise. If you're targeting a 720 plus score or a V40, basically, you should be looking at an accuracy of almost 9,500% in easy questions, almost 90% plus in medium questions, and at least at least a 70% or 60, 70% on the hard questions as well. That's what you should be looking at. And that's where most of the people falter. Okay, and, and let me tell you one thing. This is a common myth. I, I, I interact with a lot of students almost every day. And over the last eight years, I might have interacted with more than 5,000 odd students. When I hear them telling me that, okay, I get hard questions wrong, they have a, a feeling, they in, innately assume that they are getting it wrong because it is hard, it is tough. Obviously, you're getting it wrong because it is tough. But why are you getting it? Why are you getting them wrong is something you need to understand. Most people, what they feel is if they're getting hard questions wrong, just by practicing more hard questions, they will see an improvement in their score. I don't disagree, but I don't completely agree either. If you just practice hard questions without uh, actually treating the root cause, the improvement is going to be very slow and very painful. If you understand exactly why you are getting the hard questions wrong, your improvement is going to be much faster. 
and that's what i'm going to talk about now okay so in a nutshell your approach to get a 700 plus on the gmat should be first you need to get the algorithm to serve you hard questions the only way that you can do that is you have to get a high accuracy on easy and medium questions okay but the job is just half done yet okay you have just got an hard questions on the algorithm what do you do next you need to get the hard questions right and this is where i was coming to how do you get the hard questions right not by practicing additional questions that alone won't help you what you need to do is you need to ensure that you learn the right skills and you learn how to apply them if you do not learn how to apply the right skills you're definitely definitely going to struggle on the gmat okay so that's something which is very important i'm going to talk about the skill part now and that is that is why i actually uh, before even getting into execution i wanted to have a very clear i wanted you to have a very clear understanding on what you need to focus on when you're executing the most important thing that you need to focus on when you're executing is application so the right skill basically skill is consisting of two parts you have to have the conceptual understanding for sure and most of the people do that i, I hear me and me people referring to books uh, the renowned ones to go through the concepts referring to videos for concepts but they do not really work a lot on the application part they ignore it primarily they just jump from learning concepts to learning uh, solving questions and I'm, let me tell you what should be the right sequence of learning every single topic okay there's a question in the poll that comments let me take it up uh, anubhav is asking does sectional score individually matter of gmat on application so anubhav that's a very interesting question i want to take it right now but i won't because i have to stay on my uh, on on the time uh, so i'll basically answer your question once we are in the third part of the webinar in the q and a section okay so please hold on to that i'll definitely answer your question on above all right so what i'm going to talk about right now is what are the learning stages for each topic so what you should do is if you remember my whole thing initially i told you that you should follow the right sequence of learning where i said you should do sc then cr then rc and so on so within each of these areas like sc cr rc there are multiple topics so for an example in cr you will have assumption evaluate and then we can all of these the within each of these topics you should follow three stages of learning the first stage of learning should always be to learn the concepts okay so the second stage of learning should be to master a methodical approach and remember i'm not saying you should learn a methodical approach i'm saying master a methodical approach there is a difference between the two and once you have mastered a methodical approach you need to then move to the third stage where you practice questions on the topic if you follow these three stages exactly in the same order for every topic you're actually moving with you're going towards your prep in the best possible way in the most structured way okay so that's something you have to focus on and if you do this you are online to actually get a 700 plus score you will be on the track you should get to that but the irony of the fact is most people don't do this they jump from stage 1 to stage 3 and i see this commonly across multiple forums across facebook gmat club and all people right after this solve question this learn something some something uh, in concepts they just move to solving questions okay they do not learn the right approach i'm sure some of you might be thinking how do i learn the right approach i'll come to that i'll definitely come to that but if you just jump from step 1 to step 3 what happens is you will end up repeating a lot of mistakes okay harshit i'm going to give that example right in the next slide don't worry about that i have all of all things covered okay so i'll talk about the methodical approach in a while so if you don't do that you will repeat the same mistakes again and again on the questions that you're going to solve and you will get stuck around that 600 to 650 zone because remember good conceptual knowledge can take you to a 600 650 level but without the right application skills you will get stuck in that zone itself you won't be able to cross it now what does the methodical approach mean so let me take a simple example very simple example from quant let's say i ask you to solve these two linear equations okay so ramakant welcome to the session uh, uh, if you have to solve these two linear equations in x and y tell me how will you go about solving it take a minute if you have to tell me how will you go about solving it i'm not interested in the answer 
I'm interested in the method that you will try uh, use basically. Mention your approach in the uh, comments if you want to. Harshit, take a short shot at this. Tell me how will you go about solving this? And other people also. And it might happen that I, I might have a delay in receiving your comments. So uh, I would request all of you to respond here. I just want to ensure that all of you are able to connect with things. So tell me how, how will you approach this question if you have to solve for X and Y? Okay, I have first response here. Pitwish says, I will go for elimination. Jitender says, I will subtract. Okay, good. I think uh, you guys mean the same thing. Okay, there are some more people who have commenting. Equate X, cancel, and putting values Ramakant. Good. Using simultaneous equations, now means that what uh, you say, Harshit has detailed it out. Good. Multiply by 2 and, and 3 and solve for X. Great. So almost all of you have uh, talked about the same method in different ways. So let me tell you the steps. The first step, probably what you will do is you will equate the coefficient of x, maybe by multiplying the second equation by 2. So you get these equations in this form. Then probably you will just eliminate x by subtracting the two equations and you will get the value of y. Then all you have to do is substitute the value of y to get the value of x. Okay, simple question, simple answer. And all of you followed the same method. Step one, step two, step three. Okay, I see a question and automatically your brain starts triggering the steps because you have been trained really well, probably in your school to do so. But what about other areas? Probably when it comes to number properties, when it comes to DS, things that probably did not learn that well in school. Do you still follow a methodical approach? Do you know how to go through DS? Trust me, guys, when I, when I talk to students, most of them do not do the first and the foremost step for DS. That is to analyze the information given in question stem. They jump to the statement one directly. OK, this webinar is not about DS. I'm not going to uh, going to go into the depth of it. But if you do not infer the right information from the question stem, you can't do well on 700 level DS question. OK, so that is what I mean by methodical approach. You have to learn the methodical approach for every single question. And this is even more important for people uh, who struggle with verbal, especially non-native speakers of the language like me, because we don't learn a methodical approach for verbal. Trust me, guys, some of you might be thinking that how can you follow a methodical approach for verbal? It's not quant at the end of the day. but. But no, I understand there are differences that exist. But verbal is not just about elimination of answer choices. If you are spending 70 to 80 percent of your uh, time on the answer choices without proper analysis of the question, you are not doing it well. You are not doing it the right way. You should spend 60 to 70 percent of your time on the question, on the argument before you move on. OK, so in verbal, I'll just show you a simple example. When I talk to people about how they approach RC, and this is the information which I've gathered over the last seven, eight years, the most popular approaches that they follow are mentioned here. Some people just read the first line and the last line of every paragraph, and they jump to the questions. They feel that the first and the last line will give them a very good understanding of what is there in the paragraph, and then they can smartly solve it. Does it work? No. It works only for people who are already great at RCs. If you're really great, probably this shortcut is going to work for you. But if you are a beginner, this is not going to work. This is one approach that most of the people follow. The most common approach, however, is approach two. Again, and this is very logical also. Some people, when they start looking at GMAT, they think, OK, I have to solve questions under two minutes. And RCs are so long. OK, so it is basically very important for me to save time in reading the passage. So what they do is they try to read through the passage as quickly as possible, probably in two minutes, and take a mental note of what lies where. And then they refer back to the passage for every single question. And trust me, guys, as a student, I have done this for six months, six long months. OK, I used to focus on my reading speed. And I used to read so many articles every single day. I improved my reading speed a lot. But what I did not do was I did not improve my comprehension speed. And my score at the beginning of my prep was around 40%. By the end of my prep was around 60% after spending six months of time. 
okay so it is important that you should not just focus on reading the passage quickly what i realized after that was this approach does not work because it does not allow you to read between the lines it does not allow you to infer the right information and trust me on gmat rc specifically 85% 80 to 85% questions are going to be inferential in nature either inference main point application function structure whatever all of them for all of them you have to read between the lines so if you are skimming through things you are not doing a good job at it and the third approach which again very few people follow is read the question first so you know what you are looking for but this doesn't work so you need to learn the right methods to solve questions okay and i'm going to give you a very small overview of what are the right methods in sc you have to focus on meaning in cr you have to focus on pre thinking in rc you have to focus on involved and evolved reading approach in DC, ds you have to draw the inferences from the question stem and in ps you have to focus on a three step method okay so these are the most important methods that you need to learn and as some of you are saying uh, i uh, how do i learn the method or what is the right method probably now you know what is the right method but how do you learn it so if you want to learn the methods we generally organize webinars every week on these areas for example yesterday we had a webinar on reading comprehension on the sunday we are having a webinar on critical reasoning and i would request abhijit to please share the link to register for the critical reasoning webinar abhijit if you can share it it would be great for the community if you want to attend the webinar you can register for this uh, webinar click on the link and register for the webinar if you register you will also get the recording of the webinar and you will get subsequent notifications for the other webinars as well okay uh, so abhijit has shared the link you can see it on the on uh, the comment section Uh, uh it is already tagged on the video as well so feel free to register for it we make sure that we take up individual approaches in those webinars and take up around 2 hours on those approaches uh basically if you take a cr webinar we spend 2 hours on the pre thinking approach and we teach you end to end and and this is a free webinar by the way so you can and you need to learn this right methods before you move on to solving questions because once you know the methods obviously for learning the methods also you have to solve questions but you have to make sure that the focus is on learning the method and not your accuracy at that point of time okay so if you learn these methods then you are going to be prepared to tackle the hard questions as well when the time comes so what should be the right learning curve generally as i said people just learn concepts and practice questions what we do at gmat wiz is we teach you every topic in three steps as i mentioned earlier so you have learning con you have your learning concepts first then you learn the application of the concepts and then you move to practice quizzes so what we do is at the beginning of every topic you will have video lessons communicating the concepts which are required for that particular topic then we have a specially designed concept booster this is a very important file which is there in quant as well as verbal where we have basically taken care of all type of questions that can come from that particular concept on the gmat and we have taken one question of each type so what you do are supposed to do is you just need to solve that question okay so it, let's say there are 10 questions uh, which are tested on a particular concept on the gmat we will give you one question of each type so if there are 10 questions we don't give you in form of a quiz where you are solving all 10 at once we give you one question to solve first you solve the question you see the solution the solution will be detailed and will be using the same methodology for all sc questions there will be a different method but the same method for all cr questions and so on so you are supposed to see the solution see how we have solved it line by line there are some video solutions there are some text solutions also but the level of detail is same so you are supposed to go through them when you go through them you are basically able to very clearly understand what are the what is the right method and remember i said you have to master the right method just learning won't help okay so when you do that for those 10 questions one question at a time you are actually going to master it you are going to understand the nitty gritties of the method uh, to the maximum detail possible and are going to be ready to take on the practice quiz and that's when you take the practice quiz you are able to do well so this is the right learning curve that we suggest and we have made sure that every topic that we you learn at the gmat wiz course is structured in the same way it's the core philosophy that is followed throughout all right so this is how you should learn execute things okay so this is just the second stage and obviously first and the second stage are the most important but let's now move to the third stage of the uh of your preparation 
the assessment stage okay so in the assessment stage you should focus on learning and not timing or accuracy so what i'll do is i'll make it simple for you so the entire learning is divided into two phases first is a learning phase what do i mean by learning phase uh learning phase is a basic learning phase rather where you're learning all the concept for the first time so if you remember i said you should follow sc cr and rc that sequence okay so you are not supposed to do them simultaneously obviously that is only applicable for the learning phase once you have learned the concepts within these areas then you are supposed to practice them regularly okay so when you are in the learning phase your focus should be on learning the right method when you move to the practice stage or the fine tuning stage then you should start focus on type focusing on timing and the reason i am talking about this is this is a very very important lesson most of the people start worrying about timing from day 1 itself from day 1 itself and that's what becomes the biggest barrier in learning the right method and let me tell you why when you are worrying about timing too soon your focus shifts away from learning and you are not able to score well your score will stagnate around 600 to 650 because what will happen is let's say the approach that you are learning and in fact in most of the cases the right approach initially will take you maybe might take you 2 minute more than 2 minutes actually 4 minutes 3 minutes 4 minutes to solve a question depending on your skill level it might take you more but if you worry about timing at that moment you will stop using that approach you will fall for shortcuts for example some of the shortcuts which i mentioned i as a student did that for 6 months i was bad at rc but when i improved my approach when i moved to the right methods initially i was taking time but over a period of time the time uh, the overall timing went down and i ended up with a v41 score on the gmat which is a pretty good score okay at least for someone who was that bad like who struggled for 6 months okay so the reason for that is the reason for that shift to happen was the method methodical approach that i was learning so when you are learning the methodical approach don't worry about timing and this is something which happens when you learn any skill in your life okay i'm sure most of you would know how to drive a car so let's say when you learn for the first time you have to think about the clutch the brake the accelerator uh, the gearbox the steering wheel the mirrors the car in the front the cars on the side and so many things at the same time it's a very difficult process initially because your conscious mind has to take a call on the actions that are supposed to be done but once you practice that method maybe for a month or two or maybe a year you basically become so good at it that you can probably talk over a phone while driving okay by any means i am not suggesting you to do that but you can probably talk to your friend talk over a phone while driving as well why because now your subconscious mind has taken over those activities which were done by your conscious mind earlier and same thing happens with gmat prep when you learn the involved and evolved reading approach what happens in involved and evolved reading is you have to understand the purpose of every line and relate back to the previous line understand how they are related to each other initially when you do that you will be doing with your conscious mind you have to do it consciously reason is simple you did not used to do it earlier okay but when you start doing that multiple times automatically your subconscious mind will take over and that will become a habit for you and that's where the imp improvements comes up okay so sahil i'll question, answer your question uh, we do have some scholarships you can write to me i'll give you my email id later on don't worry about that so timing is something which comes which, which actually comes into picture much later so remember this during your learning phase you should just worry about learning the right method i don't care what is your accuracy it is 100% 50% 70% 20% you should focus on making sure that every question that you solve should be solved within the same method i'm 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 sure a lot of you might think that i'm repeating it so many times okay trust me i don't like repeating things but i'm repeating it because i want you to internalize this that's the biggest reason why someone gets stuck at 600 650 okay so learn the methods without worrying about timing and when you go to the fine tuning stage then start thinking about timing all right so that's how you should do what how you should move on how you should assess yourself so first assessment is your understanding of the methods okay another thing which is important is unless you master a particular a, a topic 
you should not move on to the next topic okay why is that important simply because if you do not uh, basically master a topic you might as well end up with piled up gaps so what i mean to say is you remember i said talked about three steps in a topic okay read your lessons learn concepts learn application then take quizzes when you are taking that topic quiz at the end of it you should identify your strengths and you should also identify your weaknesses if there are certain weaknesses that exist you should focus on those weak parts okay ke you i will take your question in a while don't worry about that uh, so you should focus on your weak parts once you have identified your weaknesses because if you are not working on them okay if then the issues will only pile up it will pile up and if you move forward let's say you are not very clear with let's say exponents and you move to prime numbers you are going to struggle even with prime numbers you are going to struggle with units digits so it is important for you to have a good understanding of the basic concepts first before moving on so remember this thing very very clearly now the biggest problem that students face is they they kind of try to analyze things but at the end of the day you can only do so much by yourself most of the people do not have the right tools or the means to identify the mistakes and that's why when we were creating gmat we just did not focus on the right study plan and the application and the structure of the program we also focused on using ai to serve you improvement modules in the real time and that's what i'm going to show you next so this is a, a video recording of our course so if you see in triangles concept we have four things last thing is practice quiz when i start the practice quiz this is the topic quiz uh, i have we have the whiteboard also integrated in the platform but that's a separate thing once you complete it the ai will analyze your performance so once your quiz is done the ai will identify your strengths and weaknesses so it is analyzing your strengths and weaknesses it identifies the personalization which is supposed to be done then it finalizes the personalization and serves you exactly what you are supposed to do it creates an improvement module that contains the relevant video lessons it contains the relevant questions that you are supposed to solve so it even looks at the option levels that you have marked if you have marked option a instead of option b or marked option c instead of option b there are two different reasons why could have done why could you have you could have done that ai takes all that into account goes back to the database pulls out the relevant videos that you are supposed to go through again pulls out questions which test you on similar errors and creates an improvement module right then and there for you so in fact i'll just uh, quickly uh, show you this again very quickly uh, let me go to this part so if you click on that personalization if you accept those changes by clicking on yes on the top the platform will actually uh, add this things to your course so if you remember the last thing in the course was practice quiz okay but if you click on next activity you will see that the final uh, course will adapt so if you see after the practice quiz also over here you can see multiple videos being added so your course is a truly dynamic course it re adapts in real time it adapts based on your strengths and weaknesses and i'm really really proud to say this that gmat wiz is the only course in the entire world which has the capability of adapting to your strengths and weaknesses we don't believe in a one size fits all approach and that's why we have done that for you and 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 once you do that you are able to actually understand your weaknesses right then and there work on those weaknesses right then and there so your issues don't pile up and you are much more confident when you are moving on to the next concepts so your accuracy your timing everything is great okay now once you are done with that once you are done with the an assessment phase it is also important to move like do optimization so let's say you have understood what is wrong with your prep and you have worked on it so as i said there are two stages when you do it one is during a learning phase which i showed you using the uh ai also that after every topic you should identify the weaknesses solve them right then and there but then the second stage also comes into picture where is the, the fine tuning stage once you are done with all the topics you have learned sc cr rc everything in quant after that what you should what should you do so in that case what you should do is once you are done with that you should take up module wise test so maybe take one or two quizzes 15 to 30 questions and identify areas that you are having less than 60% score in okay for example sometimes uh, when i was a student i found that after doing sc uh, my accuracy was not that great in comparison 
okay in geometry i was not really doing well with triangles so if you have less than 60% accuracy in a particular area you should revisit that area you should focus on improving it now how do you how do you improve it okay so first thing that you need to do in order to improve it is review the concepts revise the concepts if required go through the video lesson once again okay just make sure you haven't missed out on anything then you should solve and review some questions on it okay make sure you are reviewing some additional questions solving solve those questions and while you are solving the questions remember guys you are focus should not be on solving 15 questions your focus should be on solving five questions but making sure that you're learning the application because the reason why you're struggling could be application so look at the solutions line by line look at the level of detail on the solution understand whether you're able to apply the same method or not okay don't just stop because you got the question right it is important to get the question right because of the right reason okay so that's how you work on your weak areas so the approach is very very simple once you are done with optimizing your weak areas you should move to taking sectional tests like when i say sectional test i mean quant and verbal focus test so first you take up module wise test work on your weaknesses in module wise test then you take up sectional test so go one step at a time okay module wise test is sc cr or rc for example sectional test is entire verbal okay and once you have done with sectional test by this time you will be really strong in all the areas because you have identified your weaknesses you have done it much more methodically and then you are ready to move to the mock stage where you can take up four to five mocks okay more than that is not required i honestly four to five mocks is all you need you need to get used to the adaptive algorithm you need to understand how to stay focused for 3 hours uh, and that's all, all you need so if you take up few or five mocks you should be ready to nail the gmat okay so this is all about what i had in this webinar remember learning the right test taking strategy is also important when you take the mock so if you haven't gone through the webinar on test taking strategy uh, you can go through it it's there in the gmat club youtube channel itself uh, you can search for it by saying using the keywords understanding gmat test taking algorithm it will take you uh, to the right video lesson i have done a detailed analysis of it okay so we are running 2 3 minutes late but i'm happy to see that we we were almost able to complete the second part in what 62 odd minutes so let me open the session now for an open ended q&a session so i'm i'm happy to answer any question that you may have uh, for me uh, if you want to register for a free trial you can visit our website www.gmatwells.com i will even request a bijit to if you can Uh, kindly share the link to our free trial you can go through the free trial you can check out the course we follow the same methodologies that i talked about we make sure it is ai driven you can use the course in the best possible way and it's the most effective way to learn you can always write a mail to me uh and my email id is piyush@gmatwells.com so in case you come up with more questions and you want to talk about them feel free to shoot a mail to me this is my email id and this is my contact number you can even schedule a consultation call uh, uh we here is the link you can consult schedule a free consultation call one on one call directly with me if you want to discuss your test taking strategy or study strategy or i am an expert at esr analysis i'm probably uh praising myself but i i i really like analyzing data so if you want uh, to have a discussion around that feel free to give me a call by basically scheduling a call first on using this link so feel free to ask any questions that you may have i will take one question which was asked earlier it was a really really interesting question i uh, let me see that it was around the importance of sectional scores in the, at the time of uh, admissions so Uh, I, i i don't remember who asked this by the way so i'm really sorry with that but i'll answer the question so some schools do look at your sectional scores so for example if you are applying to a program which is heavily quant focused uh for example masters in finance okay or masters in data sciences and some quant focused mbas also some schools are very particular about your quant scores so they might ask you to have a quant score of 49 or more okay so that's something schools might look at again that's not something which is a must for every school so it depends from school to school the best way to know it is to write to the adcoms ask them if they have a particular requirement sectional wise also okay 
Anurag is asking depth of data which the AI is trained on. Anurag, that's a very interesting question, but at the same time, there is some, it's, it's related to our internal uh, policies also, so we can't disclose the depth of the data. But if you want to understand what we do using the data, what we do using AI, we simply work on uh, three important aspects. The first aspect is the AI creates a study plan which is adaptive. It, changes your plan in real time. It creates the right sequence of learning for you. This is the time that you enter. It changes the time. Uh, you can change the time every week. It will change the plan. So the task list is created. You are not, you don't have to worry about what to study when. The second thing that the AI does is it pulls out relevant video lessons, relevant questions, and integrates it with the AI. Okay, so you don't need to worry about what to solve next and all. Third thing it does is it serves you improvement modules in real time. The moment your gap starts showing up, the AI will intervene. It will show, serve you improvement modules. And it also sometimes asks you to reduce the course. So if you are really good at something, it might also recommend you to remove some parts of your course. So it's not like it just increases the course. It can also work the other way. So if you are smart, it might ask you to reduce the course. So the uh, whole objective of the AI is to make sure that it is personalized. And we don't stop at AI, by the way. We make sure that every student who takes up our entire course, the GMAT prep course, for example, the entire quant and verbal package, they get a dedicated mentor. Okay. What does a mentor do? The mentor basically identifies, like uh, you can connect with your mentor every 10 to 15 days, book a slot with him. He will check your progress on the portal. He will identify what you are good at and what you are not good at. And accordingly, he will suggest you changes in your strategy. Okay, and the mentors that we provide are not call center executives who are trained to read generalized state, sent, uh, gen give generalized responses. They're people with seven plus years of experience who have taken the GMAT and scored 700 plus. Okay, so good. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I, I would like you to ask questions about your st uh, study strategy. I hope the web you like the webinar, you got a good idea about it, but feel free to ask me anything around that. I'll be more than happy to answer them. I have a question for Marshit. Do I need to give a mock to check whether I stand at what, where I stand at the moment and plan accordingly? So Harshit, uh, again, if you haven't prepared at all, uh, taking a mock will help you to understand what are the type of questions which are tested on GMAT. So I would say that you can take a mock. It will give you an idea about uh, how uh, like the test is basically going on, the algorithm, uh, a little bit adaptive nature of it, the questions and all. It will also give you some idea about where you are. Okay, so that is always a good idea because then you know how much you have to improve. But what I would say is don't take your scores too seriously. I have seen some people really being worried after seeing a low score. They say, can I improve my score to a 750? I I, I would say don't take your toe sc scores too seriously. Just take it to get an idea about how much you have to work on. Okay, so obviously if you have not prepared, the chances are high that you will score low. But it doesn't mean that you cannot improve. All right, so I don't see any of the questions in the comments. I'm not sure if there is a delay in the questions, but I'll just wait for one or two minutes more if we receive more questions. Okay, so the, there is one more question by Sohail. How many questions should one practice on each section to understand level of understanding? Okay, Sohail, that's a very, uh, very difficult question in honestly. See, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's not about how many questions. It's more about how much do you learn from each question. And this number will vary from person to person. So some people, like when you say a section, I believe you mean quant and verbal. So I would say overall, if you are solving around uh, anywhere between 700 to 1000 questions, by analyzing them properly, understanding the approach properly, you should be good enough. Okay, Basically, that should be good enough for you to go and take the GMAT around 700 to 1000 per section. And obviously, if you are not learning from them, then even probably 5000 questions may not suffice. All right, so let's wait for maybe a minute more to see if any questions comes up. Okay. All right, so if you don't have any questions as of now, you can always reach out to me later on on this. On, the contact details are over here. You can check it out. 
Okay, uh, has a, have another question from Ramakant. I couldn't find any free verbal like quant section in GMATWIS. Ramakant, the free trial of GMATWIS gives you access to both quant as well as verbal areas. So we have 10% of the course for free. We have selected some items of the course. So you can't just access anything. You have elements from SC, CR, RC, all three modules in the free trial. You just have to uh, go a little, uh, like scroll down a little bit. On the top, you will see some quant things and then you will see some verbal things like SC, CR and RC. So you'll have everything on the free trial. If you are uh, having trouble understanding it, you can always uh, write to me on the email. We can always connect over a call. I'll show it to you. Okay. So thank you so much, Omar. It was uh, really nice to interact with you. And uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that we get to work together and we get to take you to your target score and to your uh, dream school as well. Great. Okay. I have a question from Anurag. Realistic chances of pushing the score to 780 from 700 in three months of prep with the full time work from home job. Okay. So, uh, Anurag, 780 is definitely a very, very tough score to get. Okay. Uh, you can get a 780 only if you are really, really good in each and every area. So, if you say, if you ask me what are the chances, the chances are definitely less to get to a 780. Probably 760 is much easier. 780 is going to be much more difficult. But you have to ensure that you follow it methodically. Three months is a good enough time if you just approach things methodically and try to push your score as much as possible. Because 780 will also depend on the test day. Okay. I hope I have answered your question. Uh, 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 I have a question from Siddhi. I couldn't find AI section on EGMAT. So again, I'm not going to comment about competitors uh, and taking particular names, but we have tried to create an AI based mechanism, which is first of its kind. So it's a very high chance that you will not find it anywhere else. Okay. How to get the full version? So Nika, so if you want to take the full version of GMATWIS, you can go to our pricing page. Uh, you go to www.gmatwiz.com. You can see pricing plans on the top and you can click on it. You can choose an online plan or you can choose a private mentor based plan also. We also provide, provide private mentoring, so private tutoring basically. So you can take up any plans that you want. The uh, process is simple. You add the product to the cart uh, and you make the purchase. Okay. Uh, Anubhav, I, I, I guess I answered your question, Anubhav, uh, about sectional scores. So sectional scores matter for some schools, which are like some schools are quant focused, so they will ask you to have a certain quant score. So I would say ask the school at com to guess uh, to get an idea. Okay, thank you so much, Ramakant. It was nice. Happy, I'm happy to know that it helped you a lot. So Prabhat, uh, share of share a list of books recommended for GMAT. Okay, so if you're looking at books. Uh, Manhattan strategy guides are really good. Uh, I found them useful. Uh, Power score Bible for CR and RC is what I would recommend. And OG, obviously, you have to take the OG. So these are the books which I find the best. Okay, again, those are my opinions. If you want to attend our CR webinar, you have the link in the comments. You can do that. I have another question from Vasi. Uh, you told that you will be discussing the basic topics, intermediate higher concepts, like how to figure out in quant. Can you help us in this? So Vasi, if you want an um, entire list, all you have to do is create an account on the a free trial account on GMATVIS portal. Even if you create a free trial account, you can still access the, uh, you can still look at, not access, you can still look at the paid course. So once you are inside the portal on the study plan page, there is a tab that you will see, which is called course. So there's a personalized plan and next to it, there's a course tab. You click on the course tab, you will be able to see the entire list of the paid course, the SC, CR, RC, even the quant foundation, intermediate and advanced. If you click on those levels, you can actually uh, like enlarge it and you can see the right order in, in, in which you should go through individual quant topics. So the order, the entire study plan, how much time you will need to study for each module is given to you, even as a free trial user. The only thing which is blocked is you cannot access it for sure. So you cannot, ex for example, you can see that you have to start with number classification and you have to invest two hours on it. You have to then move to fractions and decimal and you have to spend three hours on it, but you can't access things inside it. And obviously the timing that we provide is based on the content that we have. Obviously we have tried to make sure that you learn everything on the portal. And then it also depends on the pace of learning your strengths and weaknesses and other factors. Okay. So you can get a study plan from there. You can get an idea of the sequence, even as a free trial user. I hope that answers your question, Vasi. Okay. Thank you very much, Anurag. Uh, I'm happy to know that it helped. Okay, any other questions, guys? Uh, I think we have uh, like spent what 80 odd minutes uh, now. So uh, let's 
so abhijit i don't see any other questions so if you want to end the session we can definitely do that right away okay vinod has a question how to increase from q4143 to q4849 and v27 to a v3840 okay so vinod uh, that's a very a uh, good question i would love to help and i don't want you to answer in one or two minutes so if you want to connect with me please shoot me an email on this id uh, uh, let's connect over a call let's have a healthy discussion around how you can actually do that we will help you with the strategy to by understanding how you are approaching things because a v27 clearly indicates that you are uh, most probably again there is a very high chance that you are struggling with two areas in verbal you are good at one area we need to understand how you are approaching things so that we are able to devise the right strategy same goes for quant we need to understand what you are struggling with and then we can work with that okay thank you so much prabhat uh, thank you vasi thank you anubhav and yash i am i'm happy to know that the webinar helped you you are able to uh, get the output out of the time that you invested so great follow the strategies that i suggested and uh, yeah it was really nice to have you guys over here and i would request uh, abhijit to now end the session thank you so much guys